Friends, welcome to the seven last words of Jesus with Archbishop Fulton J. Sheen. The seventh part, which Archbishop Sheen titles A Word to the Thinkers, is nowhere recorded online. So I'm going to share with you a quick summary of what I gathered from reading his chapter. The seventh word of our blessed Lord from the cross is addressed to the thinkers. By thinkers, we do not necessarily mean the educated, but rather those who concern themselves with the ultimate questions of life. Why am I here and where am I going? Thinkers are those who, once brought into contact with the reality of death, think deeply about these questions of life. The representative of this group at Calvary is the centurion. Archbishop Sheen says, as a soldier, he was often brought into contact with death. On this occasion, he had nailed our blessed Lord to the cross, then sat down, shook dice for his garments, and watched him die. But there was something peculiar about that figure on the central cross. Often the tongues of those crucified had to be cut out to prevent their blasphemies. But here was one who forgave those who sent him to his death. Then, too, he noted that as the end grew near, he seemed to be getting stronger, as if death were not coming to meet him, but he was going out to meet it. He was not dying on this cross as other men died in bed. No, the very second of death, he spoke in a loud, clear voice, as if men were not taking away his life, but he was laying it down himself. Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. These were not words of death, but of life. While he was accommodating himself to death, it was only a milestone on the roadway in the onward march of life. These words made the centurion think deeply. Are we just animals who eat and sleep and then lie down to die and rot? Or is there something after death, a God into whose hands we go to render an account of our stewardship? He shook off the thought for a moment, but was rekindled to it when the earth shook and the dead rose from their graves and walked. He went on thinking about life and death as he broke the legs of the two thieves for they were not yet dead. Coming to the central cross and finding Christ dead, he ran a spear into his side. Blood and water came out. The divine miser had hoarded up a few drops to prove that death is not the end of life. These drops trickled down the spear, touched the centurion's hand, and tradition has it that he was immediately cured of a lifelong affliction. In any case, he glorified God by saying, Indeed, this was the Son of God. A soldier had found faith on a battlefield. A thinker discovered the answer to life's riddles in the midst of death. This life is not the end of all. Christ's final words on the cross reveal to all thinkers that life is a return to the God who made us. We came from God to God again we go. The Greeks had a theory that the perfect movement was the circular movement from the beginning to the end. In a certain way, they're right. The beginning of our life, which was God, is also our end. We came from God's creative hands, and like a planet, when we have completed life's orbit, we go back to him who sent us on our way. Friends, may these words of Archbishop Sheen inspire us too to engage with the deepest questions of life. Why am I here? Where am I going? Like the centurion, may we have the courage to face these questions, to think deeply about them, and to allow Christ's words on the cross, Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit, to stir us up, to awaken us to the reality of life, that we are from God, and to God we shall go. God love you.